too many without a book or anything, and I sort of appreciate the opportunity. But I hope maybe I touch someone out there, because that's what it's all about. It's, a lot of people say, you know, just what could I do for Jesus? He's done so much for me, and since he's so powerful, and we're just humans, and you know, if we could just touch someone through speaking for him, Amen. through his spirit, then yes. then that would just please him, I'm sure. Yes. That's better than, you know, not doing it. And I sure thank the people that's in here today. And thankful that I got off of work from time. I was a little late. And I, and I know I look a mess, but I feel good. And, well, I guess right now I'll just turn it back over to Ernest because that's about all I can do right now. I sure appreciate the opportunity. Hey, Amen. You come Ernest. back another time. Bring some songs yeah. with you. Hey, Amen. Appreciate the good singing. Enjoy it. Glad to see Jamie in there living for God, serving the Lord. Hey, Amen. It's a blessing to us. I wish we could reach more young people. Hey, Amen. Get them into to church. Hey, Amen. Begin to serve the Lord. But you know, so many young people out there today that's dying and on their way to a devil's hell because... No one has enough compassion Amen. to go to them and to witness to them and to warn them to flee that place called hell. But you know, there's a place called hell in the Bible. God said he prepared it for the devil and his angels. It's not for man to go there. And if you go there, it's by your choice. Yeah. Amen. Because God made a way of escape for you. And that's through his son, Jesus Christ, and the blood he shed there on Calvary's cross. There's no other way you can be saved but by that name, Jesus Christ. That's the only one you can call on to save you. You might call on Muhammad or one of the other prophets they talk about. He can't save you tonight. They're dead and in the grave. Amen. They can't help you. But we serve one that died, but on the third day he was risen by the power of his father. And the Bible says he's sitting at the right hand of power today, interceding for you and I. He's got all power today. Satan can't overcome him. The Bible says he went there and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from Satan today. Satan has no power except what you let him have with your life today. Amen. Amen. People act like it's so hard to live a Christian life. Well, it ain't because you've got God there helping you. Amen. It might be for some people, but today I count it a joy that I'm able. Paul said he called, it all, called all things but lost and count them even as dung that he might receive Christ and win Christ. Amen. He counted, he counted in other words, he counted all that he ever knowed as horse manure. It's what the Bible said. He counted it as dung. There in the book of Philippians, you can read it for you all, says, said he count them all but lost and all things but dung, that he may win Christ. Amen. And that's what he considered all that he ever owned till he met Christ. Amen. And I want to feel that way too. Amen. Christ is the only thing. You might have a lot of worldly goods in this life. You might have a lot of worldly possessions. There's one thing for sure. Friends, you'll never take none of it with you. Amen. But the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that naked you came into this world, naked you shall leave this world. Amen. But one, one, one thing about it, your family can't go no further than the grave with you. Amen. But on the other side, who's going to be waiting on you? Amen. You put it this way, you're one heartbeat away from standing before the presence of God and giving an account of your life. You might not accept Jesus in this life as your Savior, but one thing for sure. One day after a while, the Bible declares you'll bow before Him and all knees shall bow and all tongues will confess that He's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Uh, then He'll bind you and cast you into that darkness, into that place called hell in the outer darkness. The Bible says, uh, where they'll be weeping and gnashing their teeth. Uh, see, you have to accept Him in this life before you die, before you pass from this life to the next life. Uh, you can't accept Him out of you get over there. Uh, amen. But you got to set him on this side of eternity. Uh, amen. He's opened the door for you. Uh, amen. And the door's open. Uh, he's standing there knocking, walking in. Uh, and all you got to do is open the door and he'll come in uh, and he'll sup with you. Uh, he'll take a piece of boat in your heart uh, and begin to live in you and you become a new creature. Uh, and behold, all the former things uh, will pass away and all things will become new. Uh, amen. And you won't desire uh, the old life you once lived. 
Him. Uh, but He'll put something in you and He'll give you uh, a desire to live for Him. Uh, amen. And to serve Him. Uh, and I thank God that one day, Brother Jamie, uh, God changed me. Uh, it wasn't man that changed me. Uh, it wasn't my mother that changed me. My pop. Uh, amen. Or my wife or anyone else. Uh, amen. But when God got my heart uh, where it needed to be, He changed me. Uh, and behold, uh, land become new uh, for me and I begin to live a new life. Uh, and today I'm not ashamed of this man called Jesus. Uh, I'm not ashamed of this child uh, in the crying to testify for the one that died on Calvary's cross for me. Uh, today I'm not living in vain uh, as some people are living, uh, but I'm living by faith uh, in the Son of God. Uh, am I the one that came down from on high? Came here as a lonely child. Uh, a man didn't have wealth. Uh, he didn't have fame. Uh, didn't even have a house to be born in. Uh, but when he came into this world, uh, born there in an old cow stall in a manger, praise God, uh, he left his glory uh, above and came here uh, as a humble man of this earth. Uh, and he walked to and fro uh, in this work for some 33 and a half years. Uh, amen. To begin to preach the gospel of God. Uh, amen. But let me tell you, uh, he never was known for wealth uh, and for fame, but just a carpenter's son. Uh, amen. But he brought uh, everlasting life uh, to all that would believe in him. Uh, he said he didn't come to destroy the world, uh, but that the laws of God might be fulfilled. Uh, he said it's not his will uh, that any should perish, uh, but that all would come to repentance. Yeah, thank you, why won't people accept him? Because the world's got too many precious things in store for him. Hey, man, there's too much. Sin's got to offer them out there today. People's caught up in drugs and they can't never get clear of the drugs where they're able to see you. Hey man, what Christ could do for them. But Satan uses that to blind their eyes. Hey man, and to keep them in bondage where they'll never come to know the truth. And the Bible said that Satan will blind the eyes let them see the glorious gospel and the truth of Christ. And he's got you bound today. There's a way of escape. Hey man, if you'll just believe in your heart in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that he came here to this earth and died for the sins of the world, that he was crucified on a cross of Calvary. Went there in that barred tomb. For three days he laid there. Then he was quickened by the power of the Almighty God. The Bible says, if you believe us in your heart and confess him before man, you shall be saved. Amen. Today it takes believing. It takes faith. Amen. To be saved. A simple childlike faith today can save you from that place called hell. Hey man, so many people want to water it down and butter it up and make it feel so good. Uh, hey man, but they ain't but one thing you got to do. Uh, hey man, just get on your knees uh, before God and cry out unto Him. Say, be merciful to me, a sinner, Lord. Uh, I don't know how to pray, God, but I need you uh, to save me. Uh, praise God, and He'll come into your life. Uh, he'll lift you up. Uh, hey man, He'll begin to use you for His glory. Hey man, there's more to serving God than just going to church. Hey man, and paying your tithes and going back to the house. Hey man, I like to feel the Spirit of God when He gets down inside of me and begins to stir me and begin to roll in my soul. And I know I've got something that the world hasn't got because the world don't act like I do. Praise God, I'm of a royal priesthood today. I'm of a royal blood today. The blood that flowed through a manual veins uh, flows in mine today. Uh, praise God, I've got a new man uh, inside of me. Amen. 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 He said, there's many that for, profess me with their mouths, but their hearts is far from me. Amen. Amen. It ain't, mouth confession ain't no good. Amen. Without a heart chance plan, a heart change. When he takes out the old stony heart and puts a fleshly heart in you. Amen. One that'll love people. One that has compassion for people. These people's got a heart full of hatred. That hates their neighbors. Amen. That hates the blacks, the orientals. The ones that say, well, I can't stand a black man. I can't stand a red man. Well, I can't stand an oriental or a Mexican or a Jew. You ain't got the love of God down in your heart because God has no respect to person. I believe I was talking to some men at work today and their prejudices, prejudice can be. 
Hey, my boy, where's that love and one of them professing to be a child of the king? Hey, my boy, where's God's love? God said, I am love. Hey, man, and he's love today. And if you got the love of God, you'll love your neighbor. You'll love your brother, your sister. And won't nobody have to tell you to. And won't nobody have to make you. Hey, man, you'll do it because you love Christ. Hey, man, you'll have a compassionate heart. Hey, man, how many of you have ever read the Beatitudes in the Bible about the blessed people of God? Hey, man, how many has read about the ones that walked along the roadside, man, laying over there just about dead, and they just passed him by? Hey, man, and here come this total stranger, put him up on his donkey, carried him to town, took him into the inn there, and bound up his wounds and paid the man... Hey, man, for let him stay there. I said, if I owe you any more, when I come back this way, I'll pay you. The good Samaritan, he showed that he had the love of God in him. But to all the rich people, as they walked by, hey, man, they didn't pay this man no attention, but they moved to the other side of the road and kept on walking. And that's where a lot of Christians will do today. Hey, man, they'll walk you, pass you by. They'll see you in your hour of need, and they don't have compassion. They don't have the love of Christ. Jesus said, if you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. If you've done it unto the least of them, you've done it unto Jesus. How can you pass them by? There's a song that says, Pass me not, O blessed Savior. Amen. There's many tonight that passes Christ by. Christ walks by them, but he's not passing them by. He's pleading with them to be saved. Amen. And they need to quit passing him by. And let them come in. There's no other way into the sheepfold except through the shepherd. Through the doorway. He is the doorway into the sheepfold. Hey Amen. We're going to preach here in a minute if the Lord lets us. Hey Amen. But I appreciate the Lord. Hey Amen. I got a burden today for lost people. Hey Amen. People come here and sing all day and never mention God. People come here and sing a whole hour up and never preach a word for God. Never testify for God. Well, let me tell you, I can sing at home. And I don't pay to come over here and sing, but I love good singing. And we all sing when we come here, but we don't never leave the Word of God out. Amen. Amen. I come here to preach deliverance to you tonight. Turn with me. Amen. Tonight in First Peter chapter 2. Tonight, if you want to read with me. Let's read just for a little while. First Peter chapter 2, verse number 1. He said, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and all hypocrisies, and enviousness, and all speak, and all evil speaking, he says that newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. Have you tasted tonight that he's gracious? Have you met the one that I've made? Man, have you tasted that it's gracious? That if you have, then you can lay aside all the malice you have in your heart. All the hypocrisies and the envying. All the evil speaking of your fellow man, you'll lay these aside. Have you tasted tonight that he's gracious? Hey man, can you still remember the mercy that he had on you when you were once saved? When he was born into the family of God, the mercy he had, why can't you show mercy today? Why don't you have compassion today? Amen. I remember when I was lost and undone without God. Amen. And I can look back to that time. That's the reason I have compassion on people around me that sinners. Amen. And people say, well, you're too bad a sinner. God can't save you. Well, let me tell you, you don't get too bad tonight for God to save you. Amen. You can be in the deepest pits of hell tonight. Amen. You can be as black as the salt wall of hell tonight. Amen. Even the bloodhounds of hell can be on your trail tonight. But he'll reach down. The Bible said his hand is not too short. Amen. His ear is not too heavy that he can't reach down, uh, amen, and lift you out of the more he claims him saying uh, his ear's not too heavy that he can't hear you cries, uh, amen, what about you tonight, uh, amen, are you lowly, uh, are you down and out and you feel like people deserted you uh, amen, maybe you feel like no one cares tonight, uh, amen, but right here's a Christian tonight, uh, and we've got some in this room tonight that cares uh, for you tonight, uh, amen we desire and pray for you that God will save you tonight, uh, that God will come to your rescue tonight 
tonight. There's someone out there tonight God is dealing with. Because God ain't going to let us get on this message tonight. Amen tonight. But you listen now. Amen. I'll feel this burden for you tonight. Amen. Many times you want to be saved, but Satan's always put something in your way, a stumbling block. Amen. To hinder you from coming to Christ. But tonight the door is open. Amen. And God is giving you another chance. And God has extended his hand of invitation until you tonight to be saved. Now let me tell you tonight, don't turn a deaf ear to God. Don't stop your hearing from God. But tonight God dealing with your heart and God speaking to your heart tonight that he wants to come in. I mean, this might be your final opportunity. The day of the day of salvation. Now is accepted time. Harden not your hearts tonight, but accept him as your Lord. Amen. Christ is speaking to someone tonight, the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. He's got someone by the radio tonight, it's done too late. Amen. Because God just pokes your heart. Amen. You can't get loose. You can't get free. If you belong to God, you're ahead for time and eternity. Maybe you've turned your back and walked away from God. You still belong to Him. Let me tell you something. Let me show you an example tonight. Amen. My mother's got eight children. Amen. She's got eight. And all eight of us may have got out sometime and done something contrary to the way my mother believes and the way my mother lives. Amen. But let me tell you, it don't make any of us any lesser children. We're still our children. And we still carry our Father's name. Well, let me tell you, maybe you turned from God. Maybe you went into the world. And them things are getting God. But he's still your Father. Amen. He's still your Father today. You're still his child and you always will be you can't get away from him eternal security maybe you've tried to run maybe you've run this as long as you can run but God dealing that heart tonight and God ain't gonna let you run no further amen they come to stop and place in everyone's life amen when you come to the crossroads of life and you have to stop and take account of yourself and begin to look at your life amen and see where you stand are you in the crossroads of life are you being weighed in the balance of the scale tonight and found wanting well let me tell you Christ is there to fill your needs Amen. As the old king said he was weighed in the balance and found wanting. Amen. Will you balance out the scales tonight? Will you balance them out or you found weighed in the balance and found wanting? Amen. You know, you can put something of equal weight on a set of scales. Amen. They'll balance out perfect. But you put a little more weight on this and you have on this and, and it's over balance. This side found wanting. This side this year found wanting because this side heavier. But let me tell you, if you want tonight, God will add that extra weight. He'll bring them back in the plumb. God will bring your light back in the check. And God will get you where you need to be. Are you found wanting tonight? Is your skill out of kilter? Hey man, well let me tell you, God will add what you need tonight. And God will bring it to you. And God will supply it to you. Hey man, tonight don't let man keep you down. Don't let your family keep you bound. Hey man, tonight you step out on faith believing in God. And he'll make a way for you. There's someone tonight. God speaking to someone's heart tonight. Someone tonight. God is giving another opportunity. Amen. They walked away from God and turned their back on God. Amen. They just sit by from week to week and they'll listen to what God's saying to them and God's speaking to them. Yet they won't ever move. They won't ever move for God. They won't ever accept God's forgiveness. Amen. But God today is calling on you. He's knocking on your heart's door. You're not getting by this time. Amen. God's got you where He wants you. And it's either now or never. I've known a lot of people to backslide on God. He used to go to church, backslid on the Lord, and God give them every opportunity there was to get their heart right. And they kept putting it off, kept putting it off, and God finally said, that's enough, that's enough. Your life's come to a close, and God closes the curtains on your life. You step out into eternity to face the Savior. What about you tonight? 
Hey, people right now, it's done past 50 years of age. Hey, man, there's people out there right now that's past 70 years of age. There's people right now that's in their 80s tonight. Three score and ten, the Bible says, man's allotted days and anything above that you living on the grace of God. Oh, hallelujah, there's two here in the studio tonight. Hey, man, that's living on the grace of God. Let them pass to three score and ten that God promised. And he promised you tonight eternal life. But you've done past to three score and ten, and God's been good to you. But you still harden your heart to God. Amen. What's it going to take? Do you want to die in your sins of prepared to meet God? Do you want to die? Hey man, there's some that care more about drugs and alcohol, prostitutes, you name it, they care more about it. The world's got more to offer them than God. But just think about it. When you get there and you draw your last breath of life, you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And you'll be found wanting. Wait in the balance. Have found wanting. And nothing to bring in the check. Amen. God's speaking to you tonight. God dealing with you tonight. No doubt there's some that I've went to church with years ago. Amen. That God's speaking to you tonight. Amen. Care more about the worldly pleasures than the pleasures of God. Well, let me tell you, God's been long suffering and God cares for you. Well, let me tell you. The Bible says that God's Spirit won't always strive with man, but there'll come a time when God says it's enough. And God will knock for his last time upon your heart's door. He'll say, all right, it's time for you to come on. It's time for the judgment. But if today was the day that God called all things into judgment, would you be ready to meet your Maker? Would you be ready to meet him? Have you accepted his Son as your Lord? Let me tell you, you can't get by it. You can't get by it. Hey man, let me tell you something. There's two, two things in this life. Hey man, that I despise. One of them's a hypocrite, and that's another one is one that'll stand in the way of a sinner being saved. Hey man, I despise that type of person. Hey people that'll hinder people from being saved, and people that profess it to be something they ain't. God knows the difference today. What about you today? There's one thing in common the sinner and the Christian man has in common. Both of them has eternal life. But one of them is alienated and cut away from God in that place called hell. And the other one has eternal life there in the kingdom of God. They have that in common. They both have eternal life. But one's in suffering and pain and agony. The Bible said in the flames of hell where the, where the flame is unquenched and the worm dies not. But in heaven thou wilt rejoice around the throne of God where the sun never goes down and the Son of God is the light of that world. The Bible said he'll gird himself and feed us from the Lamb's table there. His table that he spread forth for his people. But we have that in common tonight. Both of us have eternal life. It's just that we're going to spend it in different places. And I, I was speaking to a man at the shop the other day. He said, oh, I won't be by myself down there. I got a bunch of friends down there. I said, let me tell you something. You won't be worried about who's down there when you make it to hell, friend. You won't worry about who's down there. You'll be worried about your pain and your agony and your suffering and your wailing and your gnashing of teeth. You won't have time to worry about who else is down there. One of your children could be standing there beside of you. You'd never know it because you'd be in so much pain and agony and suffering that you wouldn't care. You said God wouldn't do that to nobody. No, you do it to yourself. The Bible said God prepared that place for the devil and his angels. If you go there, you go there as an intruder. God gave you a way of escape. It's up to you which side you're on. As Moses said, those that's on God's side, come over here. We need to make up our mind tonight whose side we're on. If we're on God's side, let's get on the side of God and begin to fight this battle for God. If you're going to live for Satan, get on Satan's side. Leave God's people alone and get out of the way. Let us shout and rejoice in the Lord. A lot of you go to these dead, dried up churches, amen, where you can't even feel the Spirit of God. I'm not going to be bound like that tonight. 
God give me something I can feel. God let me rejoice in my heart. When I get stirred, I'm going to move. Amen. Amen. And when God preaches me in the power and demonstrates Amen. the Spirit, as Paul said he preached to him, I'm going to preach it that way. Amen. But tonight, let me tell you, you will burn in a place called hell, damned for eternity, alienated from God and His people, if you don't accept Christ and the free pardon of sin. I can't say no more to you. The only way of escape there is through Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior. Now if God lets you bypass Jesus and get in, then Jesus dying was in vain. But you must come through the shed blood and by the cross of the Lamb of God to get to God Himself. Jesus said, you must come by me to get to the Father. No one can come unto the Father except by me first, is what Jesus said. you got to come through him. You can't just jump on your knees and begin to pray to God and never worry about Jesus. But you got to pray to God in the name of Jesus because he intercedes for you. Amen. Let me tell you one more thing tonight. You're out there tonight. I want them to get to get to our roof. I want you to get a song ready. I'm going to give them the opportunity tonight to get their heart and life where it needs to be for God. There's someone out there tonight God's dealing with. Let me tell you this. This may be your last opportunity God will ever give you this side of eternity to get your heart and life where it needs to be for Him. Won't you come to Him right now? If your back's lit on God, won't you come right now and say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. I ask you, God, if you'll forgive me of my sins, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Tonight, if you're lost and undone tonight, don't know God in the free pardon of sin. Just come and bow wherever you might be right now and ask Jesus Christ to be merciful to you, sinner. Ask Him to come into your heart and save you, and He will. Yes, hallelujah. eternity there in that place called hell. I hope you made the right decision. If you backslid tonight, I hope you made the right decision and come into God and ask Him to forgive you of your sins and to restore unto you the joy of your salvation. Because He cares for you tonight. Friend, our time's gone for this week. It's been a joy and a pleasure to come here to minister to you, to sing to you. I hope you've received a blessing here tonight. And I'd like to invite you once again to come out to Heaven Sent Full Gospel Baptist Church they're on Highway 27 going into Mount Holly from Stanley. Be on the left-hand side of the road there before you get to Chevrolet Place. Amen. You cross from the Burlington Mill. Amen. We'll be glad to have you come out. Be with us at 10 o'clock Sunday morning for Sunday school, 11 o'clock for the worship service, back that Sunday night at 7 o'clock for worship service, and Wednesday at night at 7 o'clock. You come out and be with us. We'll be glad to have you. Don't matter what color, what race you might be. Amen. All of you children of God to me. Amen. And I can worship the Lord with everyone. Amen. Amen. So you come out and be with us until 
Next Thursday night, if it be God's will for us to be here, we'll say good night until then. May God bless you. Good night.